Minister, what engagements is planned for the rest of the day? First Minister. Uh, Standing officer, let me first say I welcome Cara Hilton to the Chamber and congratulate her on her election. Uh, based on election literature, I am looking forward to her support at the budget for the key policies of this government. <laughs> <laughs> Joanne Lamont. Well, if the First Minister's budget includes a commitment to address the question of bedroom tax, we will, of course, support his budget. <laughs> Minister, does the First Minister agree with his Energy Minister, Fergus Ewing, that a freeze of gas and electricity bills is unworkable, or does he agree with his Employment Minister, Angela Constance, who welcomed the idea? Well, firstly, I, mean, I First look forward and I welcome Joanne Lamont's uh, conversion to the SNP budget and I look forward to her support. Uh, I mean, I thought when the, the conversion to the council tax freeze was, uh, was perhaps a one-off. Uh, and now I, I, I realise there's going to be a full-scale conversion of the Labour Party to key SNP policies. Uh, Mr so McNeil, let's, uh, enough. Let's, let's, let's look forward uh, to that uh, unanimity. Uh, developing in, uh, in, in this chamber. Uh, as has been said, uh, we will consider all proposals uh, to help with household incomes, and, and we will do that uh, seriously. Uh, but I have to say that the, some time the Labour Party should give credit uh, for the fact that by the end of this Parliament, for example, the council tax freeze will save the average family in Scotland some £1,400 in total over the period. You would think with a fortnight off, the First Minister would you have a think about doing his job properly. <laughs> you know, the lesson, the lesson of Dunfermline, the lesson of Dunfermline for the First Minister, which it would suit him to listen to, is that the people of Scotland want Scotland off pause and stop him obsessing about independence and do it in his day job. And as a bonus, Ms. Graham. And as a bonus, he might once in a while answer a question. I asked him what his view was on the energy freeze. Yep. He said nothing. Yep. So let's look at what Nicola Sturgeon's proposal for a price cut was in relation to energy. She says she will pay for it by moving green charges from the bill payer to the taxpayer, paying Peter by robbing Peter. What she didn't say, what she didn't say is that the same report that gave her the idea also tells us that breaking up the single UK energy market could result in higher bills for Scots. Indeed, Citigroup estimates it would cost the average Scottish family an extra £225 a year. I think that is a better definition of unworkable. Rather than the bill payer or the taxpayer footing the bill, why won't the First Minister stand up to the big six energy companies on behalf of the people of Scotland and back a freeze? First Minister. Uh, well, well, firstly, let's uh, address uh, the two weeks off. Uh, I, I've devoted with others uh, a huge amount of time over the last two weeks in helping to save Grangemouth as a key part of the Scottish economy. I'm not quite certain what Joanne Lamont's role was in that. I thought her silence was trying to be helpful over uh, the period. Now, she derides uh, Nicola Sturgeon's proposal, but that hasn't been the view of people concerned with energy poverty uh, in Scotland, who re recognise that taking the energy efficiency schemes, uh, indeed supplementing the energy efficiency programmes that we've kept in Scotland as they've been abolished south of the border, would not only save £70 a year, £70 a reduction a year in electricity bills, but would also allow us to have a fuel poverty programme which was better integrated. Because we believe, and I think we're right, is that you're better having the government and the third sector and the fuel poverty organisations administer that programme than leave it to the big energy companies. I had a meeting with Ofgem yesterday, uh, and they showed me some uh, figures which uh, indeed are extremely frightening. They suggest, this is the regulator, Labour's regulator actually, suggest that oh, twice over the next two winters, the next two winters we are facing a, a lack of margin over supply over demand, which could result certainly in brownouts, uh, perhaps even in blackouts. That's lack of electricity supply. One of the things that will happen if we approach that situation of low margin is that prices will increase exponentially as people try desperately to get that last kilowatt of electricity. So two things are necessary. 
if competition in this market is to be applied properly. Firstly, there has to be a surplus of supply over demand so that companies compete to supply people with electricity. And secondly, there has to be transparency in bills so that people can make that choice. That is why the Scottish Government's proposal to reduce electricity bills in line with all our other action on household incomes is a practical step. And that is why we have got real ideas, thought out ideas, yeah. for getting the energy market under some sort of control. Joanne Lamont. First of all, can I say on the issue of Grangemouth, I think the First Minister's comments were unworthy of the significance of this issue. <laughs> Order. My, my only focus. My only focus on the issue of Grangemouth is ensuring that a workforce which has been loyal throughout this period is treated with respect, and on that, I'm sure across the chamber, we are agreed. And if the First Minister imagines that what he has given as an explanation of his policy and of the Big Six policy will wear with families across Scotland who are being ripped off day and daily. He needs to go out and speak to people in our communities about actually what their experience is. So let's get this right, because I think the First Minister agrees with me that the Tories have got their energy policy wrong. David Cameron says he wants to move green change charges to general taxation. Alex Salmond rejects that policy and says he wants to move green charges to general taxation. It would almost seem that Alex Salmond is closer to David Cameron than most of the Tory cabinet. But also, also, order. also, also. Settle down, order. No, I know they don't like to hear it. However, who also, who also backs the First Minister in the position he is taking? The big six energy companies. Even, even, even an ex-Tory Prime Minister, Sir John Major, is more radical than the First Minister. He wants, he wants a windfall tax on the energy companies. And what does the First Minister want? He wants to give these self-same companies a cut in corporation tax, three pence lower than whatever George Osborne sets it at. Once again, why won't the First Minister stand up to the six big energy companies and back a price freeze? First Minister. Firstly, it was Joanne Lamont who, who argued that uh, we'd spent two weeks doing nothing. I merely pointed out that most people would say that the action the Scottish Government took with others uh, was uh, uh, successful in saving a key part of the Scottish economy and thousands of jobs. I think that's a, a reasonable point uh, uh, to make. Uh, and perhaps on reflection, she shouldn't have introduced uh, the, the subject into this question time. But on the energy bills, uh, I'm not certain that John Lamb appreciates that the green charges and energy bills are a separate thing from the fuel poverty charges. The fuel poverty charges are things that we think should be taken into general taxation, supported by a number of the third sector organisations concerned with these things because that is a more efficient, it is a fairer, it is a more equitable way to attract, to attack fuel poverty in Scotland. It would also result in a £70 reduction in energy bills, which by definition seems rather better than a freeze in energy bills. Now, we have said we would consider any proposals and we will consider any proposals, but I do not think we have had an answer yet to the problem of an energy freeze in uh, 20, uh, uh, 2015 or beyond, uh, which is where it happens if energy companies, as they are now, put up the energy bills before the freeze comes into place, and what happens if they put up bills after the temporary 16-month freeze. Now, if Labour can explain how they're going to tackle that issue, uh, then I'm sure we'll give it the most active consideration. And the last thing I'd say is this. Yes, I, I think the, uh, uh, the Conservative Party uh, attitude to this has been belated and blasé, and announcing a competition report just now seems far, far too late. But I do think we should remember who created the energy market we have at the present moment. It was the Labour Party who took price controls off of GEM just after the year 2000. That's when they were removed. It was the Labour Party who created a market which had the big six energy uh, companies in control. So it is really a bit rich 
for a party which has opposed every measure that the SNP has taken successfully to reduce household incomes, which created the mess of the energy market which we are now in, which has created jointly with the Tories a situation where in England there is so little capacity they could be facing blackouts twice over the next five years to come along to this chamber and complain about a proposal from the SNP which everybody agrees is practical and enforceable that will actually reduce energy bills by £70 a year. So let the Labour Party, given the new unanimity <laughs> of backing the council tax freeze, backing our action to save family budgets across Scotland, back our action to address fuel poverty in Scotland as well. Joanne Lomond. So, for the, absence, Ms. For, for the absence of doubt, it's now clear that Alex Salmond's position on the freeze on, on fuel is argued against in the exact same terms as David Cameron and the six big energy companies. What, what a council of despair. We can't take on these big companies because they'll do bad things just now to stop it being effective in the future. Stand up to them. Don't explain away what they are doing to people of this country. The First Minister says... He wants Scotland to be a progressive beacon. Well, let's look at his record. During the banking crisis, he stood up for Fred Goodwin and the bankers. <laughs> at, the height, at, the height, at the height of the Millie Dowler phone hacking scandal, he stood shoulder to shoulder with Rupert Murdoch. Order! And now... And now, as families throughout the country are being ripped off for electricity and gas, he stands with the big six energy companies. Isn't it the case that this First Minister, who has cut £1 billion from anti-poverty schemes, doesn't stand with the families, the pensioner unable to heat their homes this winter. He stands with the energy companies who are ripping them off by offering them bigger tax breaks than even the Tories. First Minister. I, I, I've got to say, I mean, for the, the party which knighted Fred Goodwin... <laughs> <laughs> Alistair Darling had him as a key economic advisor throughout the fight of crisis. <laughs> it is uh, a bit uh, uh, incredible. Uh, I think perhaps the, the, the central point is this. Joanne Lambert seems to have forgotten that we don't actually in this parliament have the power over energy bills. And incidentally, unless I misheard her, she said there's going to be a fuel price freeze as well. We're actually talking about electricity prices, as every family in this country knows. And I'll tell you, just about every family in Scotland... We'd like to see this Parliament and this Government have control over electricity regulation in Scotland. Because every family in this country knows that with Scotland's vast array of energy resources, it is an absolute disgrace that we have fuel poverty in this country. And every family in Scotland knows that we have maintained the fuel poverty programmes in the face of the cuts from Westminster. And every family knows that a £70 pound cut a year and electricity bills is better than a freeze which may or may not be delivered where prices could increase before or afterwards. So the day that Joanne Lamont includes among her newfound welcome for SNP policies <laughs> the support for the freeze on the council tax, then I'll tell her something for nothing. And what I'll tell her <laughs> is this that we look forward to the day that the Labour Party realises that the best way forward is to take control of the electricity markets and energy policy under the control and jurisdiction of this Parliament so as we can act effectively in the interests of the Scottish people. Question number two. Ruth Davidson. Thank you. Uh, to ask the First Minister when he will next meet the Prime Minister. First Minister. Uh, no plans in the future. 